Hey everyone and welcome back to Alan Luthery. This is video four in my unofficial entry to the Great Guitar Build Off 2020. So as you can see, we got another good, good chunk of work done this week. We have pickup cavities, we have a neck pocket, we have control cavities, we have control plates. Loads and loads of work. The neck's not glued in just yet, but it's just sitting in place because it looks good that way. So grab yourself a cup of tea, get comfy and enjoy the video. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit like, drop comments, all of that good stuff. And if, the, if you're just finding this video for the first time, make sure to go back and look at the other ones in this series because they're all pretty good as well, if I do say so myself. Anyway, on to the video. Alright guys, to start this episode off, we're going to do a little bit of experimental luthery. So I have this, it's what, a 43mm pipe, a general waste pipe, cut a slot on the top of it, filled with, or lined it with aluminium foil. Because what I want to do is not exactly boil the binding, but soften it up definitely for, for applying it. So pretty simple pop these into our uh, trough as it were going to boil the kettle put it in leave it for about a half hour and then i have a form that we're going to try and bend it to so uh yeah let's get the kettle fill it up and hopefully that's enough water because that's all i brought pop it on and then come back when that's ready okay kettle is boiled it's still rolling there and Let's just in on top of the oak. It actually smells great. Okay, I think it's been long enough for these guys and we sprung a small leak, but hey, whatever. So this is my call that I'm using. Essentially, it's just one of the body templates that I have. Cut it in half, drill a bunch of holes for clamps. Um, I did seal the edges with shellac and then wax to try and waterproof it. So simply enough, there's a little weight. And I have a feeling this is gonna burn me a little bit. Pop one out. It's hot, but it's not, not painfully so. So I'm just gonna go past the edge over here. Have it nice and tight. And I try and keep this centered. And just kind of pretty slowly. I don't think I need to hit every single one of these. Oh, I don't know if there's the veneer coming off. I just worked my way around the form clamping as I went and right in here at the waist to get it to conform properly into the concave I just used a bit of a dowel which worked out pretty well. Okay for the most part that looks pretty good. Not a very enjoyable process but right let's put that aside and get on to the tough one. So this guy's definitely I'm only going to bring it as far as there and then I'll actually cut the binding here and bring it back the other way and miter the two because I really don't think that's going to bend around there. The first portion of this piece was fine but as expected I ran into a lot of trouble just at the tip of the horn there. Okay, let's check this guy out first, see how it bent around the form. Of course, in hindsight, I have made this binding way too thick. It's sitting at about four-ish millimeters, which uh, is quite a bit thicker than most other. What I should have done is made it, uh, you know, three mil, and then added a layer, or alternating layers of black oak and maple on the inside. Yeah, that's a nuisance. Can you see that? Shattered. And that's right there. 
Now that should be fine. I can cut that. It's not ideal. That means I'll have to bend this the entire way around and that's going to be a mess. I might have to do like a little cap on the top. So I'll try and bend this all in one piece and then slice there, slice there and have that a third little piece. But that looks good. Let's check what the other one is like. And that doesn't look bad at all. So I realized here that making kerfing marks was the only way I was going to be able to bend this piece around the tight corners that I need. After gluing on, they are noticeable, but once I uh, do a bit of work to them, they'll be perfectly fine. So while they had been soaking, they still need water applied and heat gun used to get it to bend because these are very, very tight angles the entire way around. So I'm using the paintbrush just to apply the hot water to, to keep it all moist really and then the heat gun to apply more heat. Just being very careful and trying not to burn the wood. This was another very stressful piece to do. <laughs> Especially because it was so tight, even trying to get clamps in was difficult in its own right. Just there I had a very small split but it wasn't bad enough to cut it out and start again so a little bit of glue and I was able to push it down properly into place so I will be happy with that. Okay I've decided to, or I didn't decide, I pulled off all of the veneer from the inside, the maple veneer because it just wasn't, it just wasn't quite good enough. And I just see, so this one is going face down like that, and I'm just seeing this edge isn't quite clean enough anymore. So I have new maple veneer cut, which we're going to use instead. I also made up a load of these little blocks. They're kind of an Elsh, or they've got a little rebate at the bottom here. So what they will do is actually sit in and grab the corner of the binding when it's in place, just like that. So when I tape it, it'll hold it both down and in, which is, yeah, that's what I need. So let's get some of our glue. This one actually just I want to squeeze out a reasonable amount of it. So veneer first, and we're just using a bit of a paintbrush just to... Okay, unfortunately we ran out of storage space yesterday while I was gluing this on, but I hope you can see it came out pretty well. And on the front face as well. So this is going to be the line that we now do our carve down to. And for the, well, we obviously have to continue the rest of the binding. So I have our small piece here, a little bit of damage and there's a little bit of carving on it. This was so, so tough to bend, but I think it will work out nicely. Um, it'll need a little bit of dust and glue just to fill those curfing marks and everything but it'll be fine at the end. So I'm going to fast forward now and 
get all of the rest of the binding done. It's going to be a little bit time consuming, but uh, yeah, we'll get it done. First off, I need to just prep the ends of the binding that's already installed, getting them nice 90 degrees straight clean, ready for the new binding to be butt jointed against it. This is a bit of an awkward process here. I have to apply glue, apply the veneer, apply glue onto the veneer, and then the binding. And do it all quick enough so that the glue doesn't dry as it's sitting there waiting for me to clamp it on. You can see I'm using the heat gun every now and again as well, just to encourage the binding into place. And then onto the definitely easier piece. In hindsight, watching this back, I really shouldn't have done the entire length of the piece needed with the glue because it did, it was a little bit dry by the end of it and I had to go back and do more glue. Okay, so the binding is on, taken off, and I'm pretty happy with it at the moment. Uh, there's a couple of bits that will need touching up, but absolutely no problem at all. So for now, I want to get started on doing some of the main cavities in the body, get some real progress done. So to start all of this off, I need to plane in an angle for the neck pocket itself. To do that, I have a spacer block here, which is six millimeters tall. And I did some mats to figure out how tall I need this. I basically took the height of the bridge, and then I added a little bit of play of one millimeter. And then from that height, I subtracted essentially everything that will be above the body on the neck. So for me, that's gonna be the fretboard of six millimeters the frets of one mil, and I'm also gonna have two mil of the neck below the fingerboard. So if you remember, we did our neck heel at 42 millimeters, and the neck pocket itself is gonna be 40 millimeters. So that's where that extra two is coming from. And at the end of the day, that gave me six millimeters. So we're gonna stick this down in the position that the bridge will be in. So I have a line drawn, and on that line is my scale length which is where the bridge is going to be positioned. I'm just gonna stick this down now it's with double-sided tape, and then I'll just start planing away with my number six plane until I've covered all of the area that the neck pocket is going to be in. So that'll all make a bit more sense now in a minute once you see it in action. Once again, masking tape and super glue trick comes out. Super, super versatile. A number seven would have been better for this job. The six was just that little bit too short, but it worked out all right. My uh, clamping situation was not the very best here. That piece of two by one in front actually has two dowels through it that go into my bench dog holes. And together with bench dogs in my vise, held the guitar reasonably well. Once it's all down to the depth, and you can kind of see at the front end of the guitar, all of the pen marks are gone. Just stick, stick on the template, and you can use the block as a riser as well, just to give it that little bit more stability. Over to the drill press, drill it all out. This is to reduce the strain onto the router table, just to get out as much waste as possible. Also pre-drill for the pickup cavities here as well. 
because I'm going to do them at the same time on the router table. go. So I'm taking this fairly slowly and every time I'm stopping the router table, raising it just a little bit and going again. You should be able to see the final depth mark that I made onto the end of the body here. And then onto the pickup cavities. This is never a fun exercise because you can't see what you're doing at all. finish off the neck pocket. I just need to get rid of the rounded corners that the router table leaves in favor of nice sharp corners, which is what is on my neck itself. A nice sharp chisel makes reasonably quick work of this. I take it really slowly just to make sure I get it perfect at 90 degrees and all of that. You can also see I have a layer of masking tape around the inside of the neck pocket on the template. This is so the actual pocket that I cut on the router table is a tiny little bit smaller than the template. And it just ensures that I get a really tight fit. I then reattached the template without the spacer block so it's no longer angled to fit the neck pocket. This is why I routed for the pickups on the router table as well, even with the angle. They can still be used to locate the template perfectly for me. So unfortunately we missed the explanation for this but I need to make some control cavity covers. To do this I'm going to be reusing a piece of oak. So I need to resaw it, send it through the planer to get it nice and flat again. Then out comes the shooting board once again. And just true up the edges perfectly. Again to get a really, really good glue joint. Next up to sort out the control cavity, I have my four knobs laid out here. I'm going to head over to the drill press and recess these with a Forstner bit. That's the way I prefer to do control knobs in a carved top, is just to recess them and then I end up with a nice flat bottom and everything on them. Before I do that recess, I'm going to drill a pilot hole the entire way through, front to back, and that will actually help me locate on the back side as well. Once I have my four placements here, I will come down from this side to get my final thickness in the middle with a large force bit. That ensures then that I have enough clearance at least for all of the pots in the control cavity. Here we go with the pilot hole. Okay, and I keep retracting the bit as well just so it cleans out, doesn't get clogged up. And on, I think I'm using a 22 mil Forstner bit here to create the recess. This is a good size for the pots that I like to use. Now they won't be left just like this. As I'm carving the top, they'll get assimilated into the carve. Once all of the recesses are done, flipping it over and using the same pilot hole to hog out the bulk of these cavities. I usually leave about five mil between the bottom of the recess and the bottom of this cavity drill. That allows almost any pot to be used. And I think this is a 38 mil Forstner bit, which again would allow any pot to be used.
I also did the same for the switch. Exact same process, pilot drill, recess, and then hog out the cavity. The difference with this is the hogged out cavity in the back will actually be the finished cavity. This is a little tricky since that portion of the top is actually angled, but it was fine at the end. Just needed a little bit of extra care and attention. I then attached the template for my control cavity. You can see it is a large cavity that I'll be putting into this. And I just hogged out most of the material, or as much of the material as I could. After this, I brought it over to the router table and brought it down to the depth I want. I didn't film the routing portion of this cavity simply because it was all what I call hidden routing on the router table. And there's not much to see. As simple as that. Now that is all done and dusted. Yes. And you can see here a lovely, lovely big cavity. So I'm sure you can see the four holes there. That's all the space we need, but for sheer weight, weight relief, I like to take out the extra, just a big cavity. You've got loads of room to play then. Before we go any further, I want to drill for the output jack. So let's pop it into the vise and do that. Now, so I want it to be the middle here between the top of the binding and the bottom of the guitar in total. And in my experience, that is what looks best. Or it's what look, looks best to me. There we go. And that is where we're drilling. But I need to have this at a comfortable angle for me to be drilling into because I want it to go straight through and I'm using a smaller bit as a pilot hole and that will guide the the spur of the Forstner bit and simply enough and there it is onto the inside and then come back with the Forstner bit. I'm using a 22 mil Forstner bit. This will allow me to actually pull the jack plug itself through the hole, which is super handy for doing wiring jobs. And also it's for, I'm using a football style, Gibson style output plate. And they just, it fits really nice onto them. So in we go. access for the output jack. Now next up we need to do the recesses for these guys and I have a template here to do exactly that. So what I did for the template was I had my master here and I duplicated this, the outline of it, and then I simply put that down and drew around it and then I went up to here and I put it down and you can see it there I just angled it very slightly and drew around it and then I realized I'd accidentally copied Crimson Guitar's PAF design whoops it is totally original but I also subconsciously copied it so uh, great minds think alike I guess we're going to stick this down with super glue and masking tape and then go over to the router table with a short bit and just take off a small layer just thin enough for these back panels which we've already prepared and 
another instance of the blind routing. This one's not too bad because at least you can see from the side. And just check it, see where you've missed, go back until it's all nice, flat, and uniform. And then onto the other cavity. Now it's all scary doing that, but uh, yeah, it worked out perfectly. So templates here for the control cavities. If you haven't already realized, I do quite like templates. So we have these oak pieces and I hope you can see this lovely kind of cathedral pattern. I actually love here. They go in and then that just goes straight up. But I wanna focus down on this area think. I get it there? Yeah, I do. And I'm going to line up these two points with the center join because I think that's going to give the nicest result. There's that guy and this one doesn't fit but that's fine because we have this piece. And same idea, position it right down the middle. And then I will pop over to the bandsaw and cut them out. And the more observant among you might realize that on the other template, I actually had a cutaway, which I'm gonna do now because I don't like these big square heels. So we're just going to lock that corner off real quick and we'll do that all at the same time. I think you'll agree, these look pretty good. Now they're a bit proud and that's exactly what I want. I'll kind of shape that edge, bevel that edge to blend it in and it'll be nice. So let's just quickly line this up. Line it up the correct way around in fact. Mark there, mark there. 
there. These are three holes. I only just touched the surface there because I want to put a much smaller pilot hole through them, but I want the bigger pilot hole through that piece. And then the same for that. Pretty good. So the very last thing I need to do here is just countersink these. Yeah, so let's pop over to the drill press and countersink them. Now they look so, so well. I hope you can see they've got a, they're like leaves the way up. Oh, I love that pattern, it's really, really good. If you want better close-up images of these and other progress pictures, make sure to go and check out my Instagram. Uh, link is down below in the description. And um, that is where we're gonna call it for this video. So thank you so, so much everyone for watching. Make sure to go hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit like, comment, all of that good stuff. And so we got a good bit done again. You know, this isn't glued in at the moment. I just have it in place. Uh, control cavities are all done. Neck cavity, pickups, the whole shebang. For this next week, we're gonna go back onto the neck. We need some position markers. We need some side frets and we need to get this neck not square anymore so that's the plan this time next week to come back and have the neck ready for gluing in maybe we'll get to carving who knows otherwise that'll be the week after that and then finishing after that so we're definitely we're getting close you know this really is starting to look like a guitar at this stage isn't it what do you think comment down below if you think it looks like a guitar <laughs> okay guys thank you so so much for watching see you next week